delighted to have you here with us another evening in this our series let's talk about him and we are talking about jesus so please tell your friends about it please like sh share subscribe let your family know about it let your friends know let your neighbor know your co-worker and your classmate we want the whole world to know about jesus come again guys let's join and praise jesus our maker and our king
to compose myself back right there to get on live good evening everyone thank you so very much for joining us let's talk about him he's on another night and we are here to celebrate with you the goodness of our god the goodness of our savior jesus christ we want to thank you for joining us on ncu 91.1 91.3 and 91.5 on your fm band on Bless tv and its 13 affiliate network cable stations across the island come cable in grange hill west star in trelawney pro cable in stony hill Cable One in Highgate, Gemini in Anato Bay, Intech in Buff Bay, Astra, Portland and Back Rock, Satcom, St. Thomas Cable, Quest in Lucy, Starcom, NCS, CTL, Cornwall Communications, WCCN, and also to those of you who are joining us on NCU Television via Flow Television Channel 617 and 188. This is I Follow Jesus. Let's talk about him. Jamaica Union Conference's first online evangelistic series. If you have been blessed so far, just put blessed and highly favored in the chat. Let us know how you're feeling this evening and let us know where indeed you're joining us from. We're also streaming to you on our varied conference platforms on the Northeast Jamaica Conference, North Jamaica Conference, West Jamaica Conference, Central and the East Jamaica Conferences of Seventh-day Adventist YouTube and Facebook platform. We're also on the LTAH app and we want to welcome this evening our friends from the Perrine Seventh-day Adventist Church in Miami, Florida and also our friends over there in the South England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. You know, along the journey of life, we meet interesting people. And some interesting people have some stories which, if you were to take away their, the smiles you see on their faces, you would realize that they have been through great experiences that has tried and tested not only their spirits, not only their pockets, but also their spiritual lives. But the beautiful thing about it is that when you have Jesus in your boat, you can face the storm. We have with us this evening, live in studio, Jamaica Union Conference's Women's children's, adolescent, and family ministries director. She is Dr. Lorraine Vernal, who currently serves at the Jamaica Union Conference office. Welcome, Ella Vernal. Welcome, Doc. Thank you, Pastor Oliphant. How are you? I'm good. Giving God thanks, sir. All right. So we're going to go back in time, though this is 2020. Yeah? Yes, sir. We're going back to uh, the year 1986. Yes, sir. An exciting year for me year when I got married. But just before I got married, sir, I had an experience going to work. And I wasn't blessed to be working very near to where I lived. So every morning I had to be out like after five to go catch my country bus to go to work. And one morning as the men were calling me and waiting on me, I don't remember anything. I, and the only thing I remembered after that was when somebody was saying, no man, she's all right, man. She's she opening her eyes. She, she's alive. She's all right. I fainted. I blacked out. And that was the beginning of a journey. I went to the hospital and found out that based on, you know, when I was growing up, I had a lot of cases of tonsillitis. So they said it seemed as if I had rheumatic fever one of the times and it damaged my heart. So that's when I found out that I was a cardiac patient. So let's back up a little bit because you said 1986 is not just the year when you, this encounter happened, but it's also the year when you got married. Yes, sir. And it happened. So this happened before or after the marriage? <laughs> and he still married me. My oh. so, so thank the Lord for Elder Michael Vernal. Yes. He, Amen. He, he, Amen. He, he, that didn't deter him. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, a few years later, I had my first pregnancy, and that's when I really started having the test. It was a challenging one. In fact, you wouldn't look at me now, but at that point, the doctor said, if I did not start putting on weight, they were going to put me in the hospital. And you put it on weight? Yes, yes, sir. And um, at a point, I became, so I, one night I couldn't sleep. 
And then when I went to the hospital, they told me that I was going into cardiac failure. <clears throat> and so I was hospitalized. Um, Pastor, I, I cried because I didn't want to be going to the hospital. And it was in that wonderful time of Gilbert. Gilbert, you mean while, while Gilbert <clears throat> you were yes, in the sir. hospital away from your yes, husband? Yes, sir, and all of that. And, but, you know, I went through it. And the one thing, the doctors, they monitored me right through. And in fact, I had a few challenges, but I give God thanks. I came through and, you know, I started to say that I'd draw a line and add up. My husband agreed with me right there at the hospital that we, this is it. <laughs> but then a few years later, you know, we changed our minds. And so we, we went for my second child. Yes. And... Um, I was okay, and for this one, I was putting on, I put on the weight, I was doing well, but then as I progressed to near like six months, going into seven months, the, I started having challenges breathing, and so the doctor decided, you know, initially they were saying maybe don't have to take the baby, but then they monitored me until then I was having too much challenge breathing, so they decided they were going to do the operation while I was... No, almost seven months. Hold on, ago. you're saying the operation like everyone is supposed to actually figure out what it is. <laughs> okay, exactly I had a, what okay is. so the doctor decided that they, um, in consultation with my cardiologist and the surgeon, they said I, need, I had to have heart surgery right. while I was pregnant. So my operation was star studied, you know. Surgeon, cardiologist, obstetrician, all of them were there wow. just in case anything happened. But in fact, you know, I was. When, before I went in, I was saying to my husband, let's, you know, put your name in this. I tell people if I die, who to get what. That's how weird I am. Uh, because I was saying, in, just in the event. But he had faith. He said, no, after you come out of the operation, we'll do certain things. Mm -hmm. So I did the operation. And Pastor, let me tell you, at a point, something went. I don't know what happened, but I heard them saying, Lorraine, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I know I was uh, gagging and blah, 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 whatever. And I don't know if they were taking out the tube or whatever. But when I came out, for the next few months, not a word in English, I could not speak. And, and this uh, was post-surgery? Post-surgery. I did not have any voice. So, I, so I even like when You had I, the baby at this time? No, I was still pregnant. Yes, and then I'll leave you a little of that. Okay. And even when my husband came in after the operation, it took much longer than they said it would. And... At, when he came up, you know, I was doing all sorts of things because I realized I couldn't talk. So he was wondering if I was oh, telling Oh, you were him. doing the sign language that we have <laughs> yes, our friends doing. Yes, and he was wondering if I was telling him that they caught something. But it's just that I couldn't speak. And so, you know, the Lord, let me tell you, you see, brethren and family and love and prayer and faith, that's why I can be here sitting. And so when you hear me talking, you just leave me alone. Because even when I finished and had the baby and went back to work, I was slurry and I was talking in slow motion because these are some of the things that I went through. But I can just give God the glory. In fact, they told me that in 10 years' time, I would have to do another heart operation. No, before you go to the 10 years point, I needed to back up because this, this is so interesting. Tell us about this slur, the loss of speech. How did you overcome that? And what was it like for you? Pastor, I'm a teacher. And so you can imagine when I came out and realized that I could not speak. And, I, you know, would you believe me that I had a stroke? That's another part of the story. When I came out of the operation, not even my husband told me that my face was twisted. I wondered why some people came to look for me and some people stood afar off. And I, at one night in the hospital, you know, I couldn't, the pain was excruciating. And I used to cry. I couldn't go to sleep. So they started giving me some medication. One, night I heard, one day I heard two nurses complaining that they don't want to be given any mother, any medication. And so I was saying to myself, it looked like I shouldn't be getting this medicine because as soon as I got it, I would fall asleep. And you could feel the baby going to sleep. So you see that night, Pastor? I said, Lord, I am not sleeping tonight because it's only when I want to sleep. And I sat up. I fixed my bed, I turned this, I fixed that, I do all kind of things. I heard the, the nurse telling the, the, uh, the nurse taking over the next morning that I was very restless. And can you believe me that from that night, I didn't have to get the medication anymore. My God is awesome. Amen, amen. And so, you know, when I look back, and sometimes when I see some of the challenges I have gone through, I think God has given me these things because right now there are many people I'm helping 
simply by telling them some of my stories. And sometimes it seems like it's joke I'm giving because sometimes I'm laughing, but... You're always <laughs> laughing when you're telling the story. But when I think of how God has been good, when I tell, tell you about brethren right now, and I'm asking brethren to pray for my brother, Brother Glassell's garden. One day he came to look for me at the hospital. My husband cooked a lovely meal, but I was not eating. And the, he heard them complaining that I was not eating, the nurses. And when I woke up, I saw him sitting by my bed. People even thought he was my husband. And he said, Sister Vernon, eat the food. Brethren, I was so afraid of him that I just started to eat. And so, you know, these are some of the things that take you through rough times. One day, the doctor was going through the ward. They came and saw me, and basically they were leaving. I had felt like a little wet spot. But I just figured I was perspiring. So I just, as the doctor was leaving, I said, Doc, you know, I was feeling something here. The doctor came over and passed her. Excitement, distro, the drunkard. And what was happening, it was infected. Oh. I don't know what else was to happen to me. You understand me? But God has brought me through. And this is why sometimes when we see people rejoicing, you don't know what their story has been. Come on. Let the people um, serve God and worship him in spirit and truth. You understand me? Because some of us go through some things past now. We have to rejoice and tell God thanks because he has been so awesome to us. So even as you're seated here right now, you still have a heart condition. Yes, sir. You still have that. Yes, sir. And that's why when you see me at socials and at fun day and children's day, I'll start from it starts to the end. I'm moving up because... You know, the thing is, I got, I was telling you about the 10 years. I'm going <clears throat> 28 years now since the operation. I've not had to change anything, but it can happen. And I live with the reality that I can go. But the good thing is, I know that God has been with me. Speak to those individuals who are facing the same kind of situation, um, whether it be heart condition or other individuals, it may be diabetes or other, other conditions condition. that are really. Speak to them from your own heart. You know, one of the things, I used to get um, an injection every month. And by a certain, after a certain time, the doctor said I didn't have to. And so I'm just saying to my brothers and sisters, we know what we are going through. Sometimes, even in this COVID-19 experience, it can be so challenging, especially for those of us who have underlying conditions. But as my doctor calmed me and told me when I got flustered, when COVID struck, do what you know is right. Speak to God. Eat right, exercise, do the things that you are to do and believe that the God that you serve loves you with an everlasting love and he's going to save you. And even if some of us go to sleep in Jesus, make sure you go to sleep in Jesus because we have the promise. We get a skip in the line and we have the promise of going home with Jesus. Keep faithful, serve God, let no one steal your joy and let us meet when Jesus comes. You know, I can't let you go on, uh, until you actually big up Ella Michael. Because oh, my darling. I, 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 I need you to actually speak to young individuals who are planning to get married because that's a very significant takeaway. Uh, because when we're doing counseling, we do tell them, make sure that you check out the health condition of your partner. But your husband decided to marry you even though he knew that you would have had a heart condition. <laughs> Just give a little 30 seconds tip to our young people in respect to that kind of you know, well, the, the thing is, he knew and he decided to still go through with the wedding. And we are going 30 odd years now. We, you know, the, all of the moon, we're still shining. But, <laughs> you know, it's going to take love for God first. I tell persons, you have to love God first before you can even talk about loving somebody. And so if both of you love God, love each other. And regardless of the challenges, God can take you through. You know, if we, were, if we were to go another week, it would be one more week of testimonies, um, digging deeper in these stories that we have been sharing. And I hope that you found something in Dr. Verno's story. There's so much more she could have shared because her, her, her life has a whole kaleidoscope <laughs> of uh, experiences that are relevant to us. As we prepare to close this segment, I invite for you to join us with Osana Praise as we do for you our theme song. And just after that, Pastor Ramon Phoenix from the Central Jamaica Conference will lead us into prayer, followed by Pastor Dudley Hussein with our health feature for this evening. Don't tell me about the popular things Just tell me about the king of kings 
Don't tell me about the things of the world But tell me about my God and His Word Jesus Christ Let's talk about Him Let's talk about Let's Him talk about King of kings and Lord of lords Hey, hey, let's talk Let's talk about Him Bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving God and O oh Father, we are indeed grateful for how you have been watching over us and keeping us amidst this pandemic and the many challenges that we have been experiencing. And we are grateful, Lord, for Let's Talk About Him evangelistic series. Everyone should be following Jesus. And right now, I present those who are online to you. Continue to protect them. Continue to provide for them. Be with those, Lord, who are in the valley of decision, trying to decide whether or not to surrender their lives to you. Intervene now, we ask. Stop by that home and release. Break those challenges, those chains of your children so they can totally surrender into your care. Take charge of tonight's service and may your name be lifted high as you watch over and bless this preacher in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, when the Lord bless 
sees you, nobody can curse you. Can't you never say, when the Lord blesses you, nobody can curse you. Cause you can rest assured, your needs he supply, and you can rest assured. Protection is always in mind, cause when the Lord blesses you, nobody can curse. Everybody just lift those hands, hey, hey, till we are blessed and highly favored. Lord, we are blessed and highly favored. And we were but with a prize. Our God is and the high deep. If you know the Lord has given the grace, sing with me. Say we are blessed and the highly favored. Lord, we are blessed and the highly favored. And we were bought with a price. Our God is sacrifice because we are blessed. And the highly favored, who we are blessed. And the highly favored, who we are blessed. And the highly As we continue to talk about Jesus and seek to follow him, let us make a decided effort to experience holistic health and development. Dr. Luke tells us about the holistic development of Jesus of Nazareth in his youth. He says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Here, Dr. Luke shares four eras of Christ's development that we must note and know and seek to experience as we strive to be like him and to follow him. One, Jesus increased in wisdom. This means that Jesus experienced growth intellectually and mentally. Two, Jesus increased in stature. This means that Jesus experienced growth physically. Three, Jesus increased in favor with men. This means that Jesus experienced growth socially. And last but not least, Jesus increased in favor with God. This means that Jesus experienced growth spiritually. We follow Christ's pattern of holistic development. Dr. Julian Melgoso, in the book Positive Mind, says that in order to experience holistic health, in order to experience total health, we must choose to nourish all these facets of health outlined in Luke 2, verse 52. One, we must cultivate that positive mental outlook because your brain, your mind controls and directs your action. Paul says in Romans 12, verse 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So be positive. Focus on beautiful things, noble things, things that are praiseworthy, things that will uplift. Look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Take care of your physical life, your physical health. Get up, get going, exercise. Research has shown that for every hour that you exercise, you add two hours to your life. Eat right. Go back to Genesis 1, 29 and choose to eat a plant-based diet. Choose to eat a balanced, healthy diet that your physical health will be where it should be and where God wants you to be. Also, 
nourish your social relationships, devote time and effort to strengthen the link between you and your family, your relatives. Relate well, have good interpersonal relationships, speak well of others, and be positive. Make friends and seek to keep them. And also, don't forget the spiritual dimension. This is crucial. And when this is in place, everything else will fall into place. When you develop that part of your being that speaks to your connection with the Almighty God. The Bible says that Jesus grew in favor with God and with men. So it's important for us to spend time with him in prayer and Bible studies. He woke up a great while before day, and he went into a solitary place and he prayed, Mark 1 verse 35. So develop the spiritual dimension of health and seek to connect with God through prayer, Bible studies, meditation, and seek to take him at his word. Trust him. He's able, capable, and available. So follow this pattern outlined in Luke 2, verse 52. Jesus, the Bible says, increased in wisdom, in statue, in favor with God and with man. Four key areas Jesus developed mentally, physically, socially, and spiritually. Note these dimensions as you seek to follow Jesus, as you continue to talk about him and seek to be like him. Remember these four dimensions, and as you cultivate them and nourish them and trust him, you'll find that you will be healthy, happy, and you will also experience holiness. And you will have that cheerful outlook because the Bible also says in Proverbs 17, verse 22, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. God bless you. Have a healthy, happy, and holy evening. Amen. Thank you so very much, Pastor Dudley Hossein. He serves as the Health Ministries and the Prayer Ministries Director at the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Now, today I got a message, and I want to publicly apologize to those of you who are in the diaspora, those of you who are overseas, who, are, who have been participating in our quiz, and we have not been acknowledging you. My sincerest apology, our intent is definitely not to keep you on the outside, but rather to keep you on the inside. So I want to acknowledge this evening, Anne-Marie Chambers and those individuals who are actually um, sharing with us in the quiz from overseas. You would understand that when we have over 100 plus almost 200 individuals doing the quiz each evening, we will not be able to go through each name individually. But we do take the time to congratulate our friends who are visiting with us, who are sharing with us, and who are not of the Seventh-day Adventist faith. And so last night, we actually had Susan Coombs, Kayan Troop, Shauna McLean, Volerick Higgs, Brimelida Johnson, Shalikia Johnson, Shante Stevenson, Isolyn Buchanan, Hyacinth Blackwood, Daniel Jackson, Elsa Beckford, Bridget Dunbar-Cole, Dwight Taylor Jr., Alison Anglin Daly, Christina Enniver, Tanisha Williams, Stephanie Fullerton, and Britannia Williams. I want to say thank you to all of you who have been participating in your quiz. And I appreciate it. want to let you know that we will be posting your names at the end this week so that you can be able to see your names as it's rolled up on screen. So congratulations to each of you who actually are participating in our quiz. And at this time, we're going to move over to the introduction of our speaker. In every age, God has raised up prophets and mouthpieces to speak his messages of hope, deliverance, and warnings to his people. It is no different tonight. He has raised up for us evangelist Dane Al Fletcher, a dynamic speaker, a man who is filled with messages direct from God's throne room. Pastor Fletcher is married to the lovely Kaddish, and he has one son, Caleb, who inspires him greatly. Tonight, let us pray for Pastor Fletcher 
as he speaks to us, that the Holy Spirit will once again use him to speak to our hearts. And just before he comes, we will listen to a song of meditation. Wonderful, 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 his life for mine. And with this assurance, I say unto you that there is absolutely no other name given among men under the heaven whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. That said, I invite you to assume an attitude of reverence as we pray. Our Father and our God, we pray, O great God, that you will not allow my sinful self to be an obstacle in the way of the cross, but that you will 
dress up my imperfections and allow me to clothe this message in the glory of Jesus Christ as you attend it by the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I'm happy because many of our friends are deciding to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm very happy about that. We, we have persons who are in the USA, the UK, uh, persons who are in Canada, uh, other places outside of Jamaica. And yes, we're happy that our brothers and sisters in Jamaica are making their decision for Jesus Christ. It is the final Thursday night of this Let's Talk About Him, I Follow Jesus online evangelistic series. The final Thursday night, the last Thursday night for you to accept Jesus, even to make your decision. And I'm asking members of the team to, at this point, give you the opportunity, if you have not yet done so, uh, to make your commitment. You are going to click on that link right now, and you're going to make your commitment to Jesus. That's how we're beginning this evening. Giving you the opportunity to make your commitment to Jesus. I invite you now, while others choose to make their decision to be baptized, to be recommitted to Jesus, I invite you to journey with me to St. Matthew. Or Matthew 25 we will look at verse 1 to verse three, 13. Matthew 25, verse 1 to verse 13. The Bible reads, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise. And five were foolish. They that were wise took their lamps and took no oil with them. Sorry, they, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But the wise took, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye neither for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I speak with you for the next few moments on the subject. What kind of virgin are you? What kind of virgin are you? In Matthew 25, 1 to 13, Jesus uses the beautiful and the romantic scenery of a wedding procession to paint a timeless picture of his glorious return. There in the shades of the evening, as he and some of his disciples sat on the Mount of Olives, they behold a wedding procession before them. It's not like our context when we have the groom going to that place of wedding ceremony. To wait for a long time for his beloved bride. On the contrary, in this context, the bride and the bridemaids 
await the arrival of the bridegroom. It is as they behold this wedding procession that Jesus shares this all-important parable. And yes, I ask the question this evening, what kind of virgin are you? In the Hebrew, there are two types of virgin. The married virgin and the unmarried virgin. Virgin speaks of chastity or purity. My beloved brothers and sisters, I ask the question, what kind of virgin are you? That's according to the Old Testament, if you ask me, the married and the unmarried virgin. But even as I consider the fact that virginity is not popular in our day, it doesn't mean that we should not seek to maintain sexual purity or chastity. While in the Old Testament there are two types of virgin, I suggest that today we can have or identify at least seven types of virgin. I asked the question this evening, what kind of virgin are you? I said that there are at least seven types of virgin. And while I talk about these seven types of virgin, we understand that there is the violated virgin. Some persons lost their virginity because they were violated. And, and even the fact of their violation brings guilt hanging around their necks. They seem to blame themselves to suggest that they are responsible for an irresponsible person's behavior. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. Really, you would have been a virgin, but you were violated. And then you have the lying virgin. You know, there are some people who speak lies. They fabricate experiences just to boast of their sexual prowess. You know, I'll never forget back in high school. One day, a young man was speaking. And as he spoke about what happened last night, another young man, I, I refer to him as Blacker or Blacks, Blacker chipped in and said, what a boy lie. Every time he speaks about these experiences, it is last night. As if to suggest that he gets involved every night. Some people lie in order to fit in. You need not lie to fit in. Accept the fact of your virginity. It's not a crime. It's not a problem to be a virgin. And so you're out there as a young man or a young woman and you're troubled you just want to fit in the pack and so you lie about losing your virginity. You need not lie about that. I said that there is the violated virgin and then there is the lying virgin. There is also, there's also the lusting virgin. Can I talk to you about the lusting virgin? I said that there are different kinds of virgin. The lusting virgin is the person who is physically untouched physically undefiled, but that person per commits sexual immorality in his or her mind. That person, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a lusting virgin. And just in case you do not believe me, check Matthew 5 verses 27 and 28. And Jesus here says that ye have heard that it was said of them of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So I said that there is the lusting virgin. Physically, you may have the hymen intact. Physically, you may not have gone all the way, but you happen to have harbored lust in your mind. You are defiled by your lust. You are a lusting virgin. And then you move from those types of virgin to the not ready and not waiting virgin. N not every virgin is ready, my friend. Some people wear virginity as if it is a badge of honor to suggest that once you're virgin, it will make you a good spouse. There are some people who are virgin, they are not ready and, uh, and they are not waiting. Are you hearing me? So, so they're not ready and they're just 
seeking to get an opportunity to give up that prized item of their virginity. So some are not, some are virgin, they are not ready, and they are not waiting. And then you have some who are not ready but waiting. In other words, they need to cultivate some other refined qualities and to be able to shoulder the burdens of life in a more profound and deliberate way. They are not ready like that, but they are still willing to wait. And then you have some who are ready, some who are ready, but, but, but they are not waiting. In other words, they would be rightly trained. They would have developed kind courtesies. They would be fitting to be a good husband or a good wife. They are ready, but they are not waiting. But while we have these different types of virgins, you have also another type, the kind of virgin who is ready. Everything is in order. And that person is willing to wait until if and when the Lord says so. I'm asking the question this evening, what kind of virgin are you? But then I hear somebody saying, I have been married for 25 years. I have defiled myself before marriage and after marriage. How does this sermon concern me? I help you, my friend, to understand that Jesus Use the example of virgins to speak about the fact that there will be two groups of people in the end that as he returns, you will have one set of people that is wise and the other set of people, God forbid, will be otherwise. Jesus uses this example to suggest that in the last days, there are some who will be shut in in the kingdom of God, but others, God forbid, will be shut out of the kingdom of God. I pray this evening by the mercies of God that you, right where you are, will stop, examine your ways, see to it whether or not you are ready. I submit to you that if you're not ready it's time not just to get ready it's time to stay ready because any time any day now we can hear the loud cry behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him I submit to you my friends yes there are different kinds of virgins now while there are different kinds of virgins we should note all the virgins, all of them, all of them wanted to see the bridegroom. All virgins wanted to see the bridegroom. Yes, all of them wanted to see the bridegroom, but five of them were wise, and five of them were otherwise. These virgins, they symbolize those who would be aware of purity of doctrine or teachings and believe for sure, surely, be believe with assurance that Jesus is coming and that they want to be saved. The question is, are you numbered among the virgins? Do you want Jesus to return? The text makes it clear that it is not sufficient just to want see to see Jesus return. That if we are concerned about the bridegroom, we must be ready to meet the bridegroom. The question is asked of you this evening. Are you ready to meet the bridegroom? What kind of virgin are you? I submit to you that just as it is not popular to maintain chastity these days, it is not a popular thing to be a true believer. If you do not believe, you should be willing to be led by the... If you do believe, rather, you should be willing to be led by the Spirit of God. Looking at what is happening in this context, we know that there really were similarities as well as differences between the virgins. When we look at it, we know that all of them were virgins. All of them knew the truth. I submit to you that it is not sufficient for you to know the truth. I submit to you too that not just that all of them knew the truth, 
All of them had lamps. All of them had access to the word of God because we are told in Psalm 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I, I submit then, my beloved brothers and sisters, looking at the word of God as a lamp unto your feet, it suggests that if you want to know how to operate in your immediate circumstance, that's how you apply the word of God as a lamp unto your feet feet so the lamp covers that which is nearby but then you talk about the light onto your path it is like a flashlight with a high beam you can look in yonder land to ascertain as to what is happening i submit to you that if you want to know how to operate within your immediate context if you want to know how to be a good husband if you want to know how to be a good wife, if you want to know how to be a good child, if you want to know even how to wait, if it is that you want to have a good partner, if it is that you want to be successful in life, pay attention to the word of God. And if it is that you want to know what is going to happen in your future, if you want to look down the road, you got to pay attention to the prophecies as outlined in scripture. And the word of God declares to you this evening that in a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. The word of God declares tonight that the signs of the time are suggesting that it is Time for us not just to be getting ready, but time for us to stay ready to meet our Lord and our God. Stay ready. That's what the Word of God is saying. So yes, all had, had lamps. All were looking forward to seeing the bridegroom. All slumbered and slept. All arose and trimmed their lamps. All were looking for the coming of the bridegroom. All wanted to be at the marriage. All began the journey with oil. And the oil here represents the Holy Spirit. You can check Zechariah 4 and you will understand more about how the Holy Spirit functions as oil. I, I want you, my brother, I want you, my sister, to know that you cannot be truly ready until you are spirit-led. It is not just about following the inclinations of your heart. It is not just following what your pastor teaches. It is not just believing what your church practices. It's about being led by the Spirit of God. It is not just looking at yourself and telling yourself that you are good all by yourself. Nothing is wrong with you and that you are better than many of those who go to church. It is not for you to do that because my Bible tells me that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And the only way I can be restored is to accept the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So this evening, my friends, if you want to experience better life, if you want to be prepared to meet your Lord and your God, you got to have a full dose of the Holy Spirit. And you must be willing and ready to follow the Holy Spirit. So are you willing to follow the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? And I, I need to tell you a little bit. I need to tell you a little bit. I need to tell you a little bit. A little bit about the Holy Spirit now. Jesus, in St. John 14, verses 16 to 18, He promised the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth according to verse 17. Now, I shared earlier in this series that those who will receive the Spirit of God are a commandment-keeping people. Because in St. John 14, verse 15, the Bible says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. So, it is after this verse that Jesus continues, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. My beloved brothers and sisters, I submit to you that people who were looking forward, or the virgins who were looking forward to seeing the bridegroom, the problem they had, the foolish ones, or those who were otherwise, is not that they slumbered, it's not that they slept, the 
problem they had is that they never had enough oil. They never had the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not be led into all truth. And if you don't believe me, journey with me now to St. John chapter 16, verses 7 to 8. The Bible says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. So when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will help you to know that you have sinned. The Holy Spirit and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So, so we understand that all began with the Holy Spirit. But some never ended with the Holy Spirit. If it is that you are going to make it, if it is that you are going to be wise and not otherwise, you have to heed the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And I believe right now, I believe right now that there is a thug on your heart. The Holy Spirit is bidding you. The Holy Spirit is urging you. The Holy Spirit is saying now is the acceptable time. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes, my friend, the Holy Spirit is saying if you should die and your soul should be lost, it would be nobody's fault but yours. The Holy Spirit is saying it's time for you to forsake your sinful ways. It's time for you to decide to start a new way of life with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is speaking gently and profoundly to your heart. The Holy Spirit is helping you to know that even though you would have sinned, you would have come short of the glory of God. Yes, your life does not add up and you will never ever be good enough. The Holy Spirit is telling you right now that you do not have to be good enough. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, come just as you are. The Holy Spirit is telling you, amend your ways. The Holy Spirit is telling you, repent, look to Jesus and live. The Holy Spirit is telling you, leave that forbidden relationship. The Holy Spirit is telling you, honor the Lord your God. Keep His commandments. The Holy Spirit is telling you that within a little while, Jesus Christ will burst the clouds of glory. The Holy Spirit is nudging at your heart. The Holy Spirit is telling you that tonight could very well be your last night. The Holy Spirit is talking to you, saying that even though you may have dirty hands and an impure heart, there is cleansing power wonder-working power in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is telling you that even though you may have many obstacles, we serve a God who is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. The Holy Spirit is reminding you that even though you may have the mountains on either side, the Red Sea before you and the Egyptians coming after you, the Holy Spirit is telling you that God still has the capacity to engineer a road through your Red Sea. The Holy Spirit is telling you that while your mountain may seem insurmountable, if you have but a little bit of faith as that of the mustard seed, you can remove mountains. The Holy Spirit is telling you this evening that God has a divine bulldozer that can pulverize any mountain. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit wants you to be wise and not otherwise. So as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, I pray that you will not harden your heart. So I said, they had similarities. But they also had differences. They had differences. The wise took oil, but the foolish took no oil. The wise were shut in, but the foolish were shut out. 
The wise were ready, but the foolish were not ready. I submit then, beloved brothers and sisters, my dear friends, I submit to you that you should consider who you are as you anticipate the second coming of Jesus. Anticipate, your, look at your readiness to see if Jesus were to come now, if you would be ready. Consider your position. Assess yourself. Examine your position. Decide now to look at the person in the mirror. Are you ready? If Jesus were to come now, would you be ready? And interestingly, 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 my friends, while they slumbered and slept, the Bible says that it is at midnight, a time when hardly anybody is doing anything. Midnight when... Uh, things are slow, midnight, in the cold of the experience, the darkest point in time. It is at midnight that the cry is made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. I suggest to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that while it is midnight, I believe Firmly that it is speaking about the dark conditions of this sin-cursed earth. For truly it is a critical point of consciousness to which we have come to live. It is that point that begs us to live in a state of readiness for the second coming of Jesus. Yes, my friend, it is so critically important that we must stand alert. We must be Constantly alert because Jesus in St. Matthew 24 verse 24 says that the devil will do signs and wonders to the extent that if it were possible, even the very elect would have been deceived. I submit to you that while it is midnight, darkness should not prevent alertness. It is in this time of midnight that we should understand that truly weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning the bridegroom will come to usher in a new experience but things will be dark for you if you do not have the spirit of the lord things will be dark for you if you are not ready when he returns what kind of virgin are you? Now, while it is a world that is engulfed in darkness, and sometimes the darkness around us is so dark, it becomes palpable. It is like you can feel it. When you look at immorality, it causes you to cringe if you have a sense of right and wrong. If it is especially that you were born not too long ago before uh, the 21st century. If it is that you had a sense of how life happened to be before this time, you would underscore that truly Isaiah was right when he prophesied of that time in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 when he says that darkness or verse 2 darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but while darkness will cover the earth the Bible says but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee it is a dark world that begs for the bridegroom to return and this bridegroom is Jesus Christ himself who is also the light of the world it doesn't matter how dark your circumstance is tonight Jesus can shed some light on you Jesus can make a way he can clarify the situation he can help you to see where to move and to put your next foot but while this is the case note that the journey begins with the first step Jesus will not help you to see what to do 10 miles down the road if you are not willing to make the first step. The journey of your salvation begins with the first step, the first step to Jesus. It is one step of faith. And as you journey, as you journey, my friends, I remember, I remember that song, 
one set of footprints in the sand. Yes, my friend, when you begin the journey, when you begin the journey, it will be rough, but you will see the footprints of Jesus and you will be able to walk in his steps. And then after a while, you may see but one set of footprints. It is at that time that the Lord will carry you. I want you to be assured, my friend, that God is still in the business of carrying people. He's still in the business of carrying people. And can you imagine? I, I, I won't ever forget. We're still talking about what kind of virgin are you. And we're looking at the marriage supper that will be kept when Jesus comes. And I talk about uh, the, the, the good Lord or carrying you. I'll never forget that uh, when I got married, I, I was able to carry my wife. And I pray that until we die, I will be able to carry her. I, I, my brothers and my sisters, unlike me, I, I may get weak and frail. And yes, uh, God forbid, my wife, I hope not, uh, may get some uh, uh, horizontal blessings to the point that she may become a little bit heavy. It doesn't matter how heavy you get. It doesn't matter how burdensome you get. Jesus always has the strength to carry you. He will carry you all the way, even into his eternal kingdom. Just allow Jesus to carry you as you choose to live in accordance with his word. Just choose to live in accordance with the word of Jesus Christ. So we understand, beloved brothers and sisters, looking that darkness may come upon us. We are encouraged by the Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Romans, Chapter 13, that and knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. And then verse 14, after he says that we should cast off the work of darkness, in verse 12, he says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We're living at a time when we must cast off the works of darkness. It is late time. It is approaching midnight. And the cry will soon be heard. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And, and I shall help you to understand that when Paul speaks about the time in which we live, that it is high time to look to our Redeemer, he says that we should cast off the works of darkness. I want you to know that the word cast off doesn't mean to drop. There are some people who just want to drop bad habits. If you just simply want to drop bad habits, you will not be, be able to make it. If you simply want to drop bad habits, you will not be able to make it. My beloved brothers and sisters, the Bible says that we should make some effort to throw them away. And when we throw them away, it suggests then that it will take some energy for us to go after them. My dear friends, I want you in this dark world to choose to be wise and not otherwise. I want you to choose to be a virgin who is ready and not a virgin who is unprepared. I want you by the power of Jesus Christ to choose to be shut in and not shut out. Be ready to take your stand. Be ready to make your decision for Jesus Christ. And as you make that decision this evening, I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that if you are not ready, if you are not prepared, if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be shut out of the kingdom of God. And for that, I pause to take a drink. If you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit to lead you and to direct you into all truth, you will be shut out. God sees the good in you. He knows the promise you are. But if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be shut out. And while you would be shut out, I submit to you that when the loud cry is made, all virgins are awake. But while all virgins are awake,
some are not ready. Some who are otherwise seek to get oil from the wise. The Holy Spirit is the oil. As we edge to the second coming of Jesus, we should note spirituality cannot be borrowed. Spirituality cannot be borrowed. It is either you have a commitment and a connection with Jesus that continues to grow or you have no commitment, no connection to him. You should understand that the relationship of your father or your mother or your grandparents or your great-grandparents, that relationship which they had with God cannot suffice for your relationship. You may have had a good relationship when you were a child. You may have started out well. You were brought up in church. But now you're not committed. You're not connected. That won't do. I submit to you then that even as the cry is made and they go out to fetch oil for themselves, they go and they realize that the door is shut. And when they knock on the door, the bridegroom answers. And the bridegroom says, I know you not. Now, now the implication is that those who were shut out really had no special commitment with the bride. In fact, for this reason, the bridegroom was not in any way obligated to allow them to enter. I submit to you that the church, according to Ephesians chapter 5, is the bride of Christ. When the bridegroom comes, if you have no commitment with his church, that is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, if you have no commitment with him, you will be shut out. Some of you would have attended the engagement party. That is, you would have come to church time and again. You would have watched series like these time and again. But you would have failed to make a commitment. You attend the engagement party, but you do not make it to the wedding. It's not sufficient to attend the engagement party. You must decide to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The question is asked of you this evening. What kind of virgin are you? Are you a ready virgin or are you a virgin who is not ready to meet your Lord and your God? What kind of virgin are you? Is it that you are a virgin that has your lamp trimmed? Or is it that you have no lamp? My dear friends, is it that you have the lamp which is the word of God? And is it that you are willing to follow where God's le God leads? Is it that you have the oil of the Holy Spirit? Are you willing, are you ready to follow the Holy Spirit? What kind of virgin are you? Are you a disobedient virgin? What kind of virgin are you? What kind of virgin are you? Are you a ready virgin or an unready virgin? Are you a prepared virgin or an unprepared virgin? What kind of virgin are you? The loud cry is being made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. What kind of virgin are you? Do you have your lamps trimmed and ready? Are you filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you this evening declaring, Where he leads me, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I'll gladly follow thee. What kind of virgin are you? Are you a faithful virgin or an unfaithful virgin? What kind of virgin are you? Are you ready to meet your Lord and your God? Does the bridegroom know you? Do you have a relationship with him? What kind of virgin are you? If Jesus the bridegroom should come now, would you be shut in or would you be shut out? What kind of virgin are you? Are you ready to meet your Lord? What kind of virgin are you? Sister Grant is getting ready to sing the song. I submit to you, beloved brothers and sisters, dear friends, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, adopted brothers and sisters. I submit to you that if you don't have 
the word of God as your standard, as your guide, then you will lose your way. I submit to you that the word of God says that we should keep all his commandments. For James 2 verse 9, James 2 verse 10 says that each if we shall keep all the commandments and yet offend in one point, we are guilty of all. What kind of virgin are you? Are you a commandment keeping virgin? Are you a faithful virgin? Are you following God at his word? Is it that you are following the tradition of men? Are you a coward virgin? God doesn't want to have a coward virgin. He wants a faithful virgin. One who will trust him in all things. What kind of virgin are you? Do you want to be pure and ready to meet your Lord and your God? Do you want to make that full commitment to Jesus Christ? What kind of virgin are you? You're getting the link. You're getting the link and you don't want to be shut out. You're getting the link and you don't want to be shut out. You're getting the link. You don't want to be shut out. You're, you're clicking, yes, we want to pray for you. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know. We have received some messages that some of you have been violated. You lost your virginity even to a close family friend. And you feel like you really should not have any part with God. You may even feel like you should not even go to church, but... Jesus wants you. You who have been abused. You who happen to have been violated. Jesus wants you. It is getting late. It is getting dark. Very dark. It's getting very dark. And you will not be able to make it without the lamp. You will not be able to see where you are without the light. What kind of virgin are you? Before too long, before too long, before too long, there will be darkness covering the earth there will be a time not long from now when you will want the preacher to preach but you will cry and as you cry for him the preacher will be nowhere to be found because preaching will become illegal as people preach as pastors evangelists proclaim the undiluted word of god even church leaders will become so corrupt that they will persecute those of us who stand for righteousness, what kind of virgin are you? Are you ready to make your commitment in this world of darkness? Are you deciding that you really want to be saved? What kind of virgin are you? Are you ready? And, and, and maybe you don't like this virgin argument. What kind of person are you? Are you ready? Are you a ready person? You're not sure, you're not sure, you're not sure if you could die. You see, when I was a little boy, I thought that only old people died. That's what I thought until a little girl named Adris died. Adris may not have been more than about five years old when she died. You don't have to be old to die if it should be that your clock strikes death o'clock. There's no time called death o'clock. But you understand what I mean. If your clock should strike death o'clock tonight, would you be ready? Would you be saved or would you be lost? It's getting dark around. It's getting dark, cold and dreary. Sin envelops the land. When we see brutal and cruel men raping little children and Cutting them into pieces, we know that darkness is upon the land. When we see relatives contracting murderers to kill their very own relatives, we know that darkness is upon the land. When we see that corruption invades the public and the private sector and people do ungodly things, we know that Darkness is upon the land. When even in our churches we see predators looking for children to violate. We know that darkness is upon the land. And in a little while the midnight cry will be sounded. The midnight cry will be heard. Behold the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him.
you're clicking on that link. You're clicking to recommit your life to Jesus. You're clicking, you're clicking to be baptized. We'll be having a massive final baptism on Sabbath. And you should be in that number. Come, decide now. Be ready for your Lord and your God. And you will continue to make that decision as Sister Grant sings. Sweet promise is given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, mine own to receive. Hold fast till I come. The danger is great. Sleep not as do others. Be watchful and wait. We watch on to purr with lamps burning bright. Comes to all others, a thief in the night. We know he is near, but know not the day as spring shows that summer is not far away. Hold fast till I come, sweet promise of heaven, the kingdom restored to you shall be given. Come enter my joy, sit down on my throne. My crowns are in waiting, hold fast till I Master's coming draweth near. Let every lamp be burning. Hold fast till I come, sweet promise of heaven. The my joy sit down on my throne bright crowns are in waiting hold fast till I come tonight tonight my friends this is a decision that is made because you love the Lord and you want to live with Him forever. It's a decision that you make because you love yourself and you want to be saved. You don't want to be shut out. Yes, there are some people who die on their way to heaven, but they never make it. I know too many people who had a good mind, they had a good intention. They wanted to make that committed commitment to the Lord, but before they got to do it, that death o'clock came their way. They never made it. I know too many people to give you an example. Some young, some not so young. I submit to you this evening, decide, decide it's you for your own good. 
God doesn't really need you to be God, but you need God in order to be alive. If you remove God's breath from your body, you return to dust. Because dust you are, and to dust you will go. It's the last Thursday night. And you, you want to be ready to meet Jesus. But hey, Jesus is saying that it's not sufficient to want to meet me. You have to be committed to me. You have to be willing to follow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart. The Holy Spirit is pulling against the strings of your heart. The, the Holy Spirit is saying, amend your ways. The Holy Spirit is saying, things are rough. They are rough. They are rough. But God, he will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit is saying to you this evening, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And if you do not have or yield, yield to the power of the Holy Spirit, then you will lose your way. When the bridegroom comes, your lamp will run out of oil. When the bridegroom comes, yes, you will be shut out. I pray by God's grace you will not be shut out. I tarry a little longer to give you, my friend. You'll get the link another time. I tarry a little longer to help you to know that this is the best decision. Baptism. Baptism doesn't mean that you are perfect. But it means you are committed. You are committed to Jesus. And you're making that commitment to Jesus. You're demonstrating your love for God. You're accepting his gift of salvation and you're saying that I just don't want to be numbered among the virgins. I don't want to be otherwise. I want to be wise. I want to be ready. I, I don't want to be shut out. I want to be shut in, shut in, sealed and delivered, saved in the kingdom of God. That's what you're saying this evening. Yes, yes, yes. You're making that decision. And Pastor Oliphant, our co-host, or co-evangelist and host will pray that special prayer for you as you seal your commitment with Jesus because you don't want to be shut out of the kingdom. You don't want to banish in hell with the devil and his angels. You don't want to lose your way. So nothing is worth the while. Just move forward as a virgin who is ready and waiting to see your Lord and your God. God bless you. There are a number of requests this evening, even as we prepare to pray. Roxana Nelson Smith asks us to pray for Brother Lewis, who will be doing a heart surgery. Tomorrow, Alexa will be doing a surgery. Taffy Kitchen is asking for prayer for her back surgery, which will be done. Angela Taylor asks us to pray for her father, brother, her sons, her family, and the interest that she's studying the Bible with. There's so many prayer requests. As I listened to the message today, tonight, my heart goes out to those of you who are watching who are facing circumstances which make it hard for you to step out for Jesus. So Sister Grant sings this chorus one last time, just before I kneel, just before I commit your situation to God in prayer. Just remove everything that will distract you. And let's bond with God Hold in prayer. Fast till I come, sweet promise of heaven, the kingdom restored to you shall be given. Come enter my joy. Sit down on my throne, bright crowns are in
in waiting hold fast till I come Abba Father the truth of that story in Matthew chapter 25 is that that story was not so much meant for the time in which it was spoken but it was used as an imagery for the people who would be living at the very end of earth's history you have put into two groups you have placed us eternal father on the side of those who are wise and on the side of those who are otherwise and the only thing that makes the difference is a little bit of effort a right decision at the right time using the current moment to secure a future victory using the present time to prepare for what is to come and so in this dark night of earth's history, when immorality, when the stresses and strain of the financial burdens are upon us, in this time, Almighty Father, when the world is wandering after the beast, in this time when the message of Revelation 14 is going forth, you have spoken to each of us individually tonight to settle the score with you and to do what is necessary to advance our spiritual interests from time to eternity. So tonight, Almighty Father, great God of Israel, sovereign ruler over all the earth, as powerful as you are, you will not do for man what man can do for himself. You have left with us all the freedom of choice. A conscience that can be spoken to by your Holy Spirit. And tonight we're asking you for each of us who are listening, for each of us who are watching, watching we are asking you this evening to do something mighty in our hearts that we may be pricked, that our minds may be changed and that our feet may turn from the paths of unrighteousness to the paths of the kingdom. Somebody wants to make it into the wedding feast, but they are not willing to take off their garb. Somebody is willing to make it to that dining hall, but they are not willing, Almighty Father, to allow their empty cup to be filled by you. Someone wants to, to be able to feast at that table, that reception, but he or she is not willing to go the extra mile and to let go of that lazy spirit and to rise up in spiritual might and in power. Someone tonight who is listening to this sermon may think it is just another message may think almighty father it is just some spiritual theory that is being enacted but I pray that you may arrest the attention of every listener and every viewer and help us all tonight to recognize that you were speaking of us in 2020 you were looking down the annals of time and you saw how lazy spiritually we have, we have become you have seen almighty father how much easier it is for us to turn on the TV and to watch a movie than to get down on our knees and pray. You have seen, Almighty Father, how much easier it is for us to study for PEP and CSEC and our degrees, certificates and degrees otherwise. And yet still we are lazy to dissect your word even when we know you have said that we are to study to show ourselves approved. Lord, we know that we are weak. We know that we are frail. We need a little energy to press forward. We need a spiritual insight. We need more than just spiritual words. We need something that will help us to press on. So in this moment this evening, on this last Thursday 
tonight of let's talk about him. I pray and I ask that you may strip up or strip us of all spiritual laziness, that you may strip us of all spiritual lethargy, that you may strip us of all our spiritual backsliding, and that we, Almighty Father, may seize this great moment. For once that door is shut, it is shut forever. We cannot go back. We cannot enter in by another way. There is one time given to us to make our calling and our election sure. So tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, even though he has done everything to save us, I am pleading on behalf of your children and I am asking you, Almighty Father, let that man not rest tonight until his spirit finds rest in you. Let that woman not find peace tonight until our soul cries out to you. I'm asking you, Abba Father, that you use this night in the midst of the darkness to shine light into our souls that we may be wise virgins. That we may utilize these precious moments. Lord, we're lazy. There are times we wake up. We prepare to go to work. We prepare to take care of the children. We prepare to take care of our family. But the things that matter for our own spiritual salvation, we leave by the wayside. We are too lazy to go to get that extra oil. We want an easy walk with you where whatever we ask of you, it will just come to us like that. Tonight, Almighty Father, thank you for bringing us to Matthew 25. Thank you for showing us in as much as you have a heaven prepared for us, we must be prepared for heaven. In as much, Almighty Father, as there is a feast which you have invited us to dine with you at, we have a role to play. So for that individual who is still wavering. I pray that through this prayer tonight, you may allow the message that has come through your evangelist to our hearts to resonate with such power and such force that we don't rest tonight until we have sealed the deal with you for eternity. Thank you for the great privilege given to us to make our wrongs right. Thank you for the privilege to work our spiritual muscles that we may grow up to be men and women with sound backbone and with strength to conquer the enemy. Give us all we require as you have promised. Is our asking in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The Advent hymn says, let every lamp be burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing, the darkest hour of earth's long night, before our Lord's appearing. Then trim your lambs, my brethren dear, then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming draweth near, let every lamp be burning. We are happy, we are delighted that you have taken the time to be with us on NCU radio, on NCU television, on Blessed Television and its 13 affiliate network station, on WCCN, on Cornwall Communications, on all of our conference platforms, we are grateful. We feel privileged and honored that you have taken the time to be with us and to share the message with others. Tomorrow evening will be the last in the Let's Talk About Him online evangelistic series. I invite you to invite your friends to be with us, your families, your neighbors, your colleagues, your co-workers. Invite everyone to, for a Friday evening feast as we welcome the Sabbath together, as we celebrate the dawn of a brand new evening with the Lord. Join us at 7.30 tomorrow evening as we share with you the word of God. On behalf of the production team, the communication directors across the entire Jamaica Union Conference territory, on behalf of the Let's Talk About Him Planning Committee at Mandeville, from Mandeville at Jamaica Union Conference Headquarters, I'm Omar Oliphant, inviting you to walk good, stay COVID-free, and come with us right now as we sing again 
our theme song with Osana Praise. Let's talk about him. Don't tell me about the popular things. Just tell me about the King of Kings. Don't tell me about the things of the world. But tell me about my God and his word. Jesus Christ. Let's talk about him. Let's talk about him. Trusting. 